Okay, so the purpose for this video is to show the fact that R omega is matrizable. So what is R omega? It's a countable product of, of the real line. So the product topology is matrizable. So here's the precise statement. So we recall the standard bounded metric on R. And for omega to be countable set, for any x, y, and r omega, we define dxy as the supremum of all the i's of all such quantities, where uh, the numerator is the standard bounded metric in each component, and we divide it by i. So this definition makes sense, right? Because omega is countable, and this this thing is always less than or equal to one. If this thing makes this entire thing right bounded, so the supremum is of course um, defined. And this is indeed a metric on our omega such that induces the product topology on our omega. Okay, so this is the purpose for this video. So let's prove it. So first we're gonna verify that this is indeed a metric. And you're gonna observe that if you think about this, if you stare at it, and trying to verify that this is indeed a metric, you're gonna see that just the triangle inequality is less trivial. And indeed, it is still uh, simple. So for any i, we have triangle inequality in each component, right? This, this triangle inequality holds in every component. And then now we just divide by i on both sides, right? And each of them is by definition bounded by them so all this quantity is bounded by this, which implies that dx z is bounded by this, right? Because it is defined as a supremum. This is already an upper bound, and dx z is the least upper bound, right? So we have verified that this is indeed a metric. Now we're going to show that it is gives the product topology. So first, we're going to show that each topology is finer than each other. So first step, let u be open in metric topology and x and u. We want to find v and open in product topology such that x contained in v and v is a subset of u. And this is what we want to show that um, the product topology is finer. Right? And let's just do it. We pick first because u is open in metric topology and x is in u. So we can pick an epsilon greater than zero such that the, the ball right, is contained in U. And we also pick N such that this one over N is less than epsilon. Now let V uh, be the product of X1 minus epsilon, X1 plus epsilon until this Xn minus Xn and the rest is the product of reals. So this is a basis element in r omega right this is the basis element in r omega and we claim that this v is contained in this to verify this claim first observe that for any y in r omega we have if i is if i exceeds n then this is less than or equal to one and so so we have this in inequality right so the distance between x and y must be smaller than or equal to the maximum of them, right? Because it's the supremum. It's, it must be less than or equal to the maximum of them, right? Because they bounded all such quantity, right? So now if y specifically, if y is in v, if y is in v, right is in here then this quantity right um dx I, if i is between one and n then this will be less than epsilon right like look at this and we divide by i right and if i is greater than n right then their distance right their distance will be less than one over n but we pick n such that this is true so 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 no matter what, for any i, this thing is bounded, it's always bounded by epsilon, right? So we have the thing, right? If y is in v, then we have this.
which gives this. So we're done with this direction. And let's do the other direction. For the basis element in the product topology x contains u, we want to find v open in the metric topology such that x is in v and v is a subset of u. Okay. Um, if we've written this, then let the ui open an r for some finally many indices and the rest of u has to include the entire space. And we're only going to focus on them. For them, right? Pick epsilon i is less than one such that specifically for this component, right, we make this neighborhood is contained in this ui, right, because ui is open in r, right? Like we're just working with each component right now. And uh, yet yeah, there's finally many of them. Let epsilon be the minimum of ei divided by i for all such i. Okay, with this epsilon being defined, what we're going to see is that we have for this epsilon b d x epsilon is contained in u and indeed um let y be in here then by definition we have this right for any i we have this okay so if we care about is those right because like for for other is r right there's really no restriction here so all we care is the finally many of them but for finally many of them Epsilon is defined less than equal to all the epsilon i over i. So, right, so this is less than equal to epsilon i over i. We define that so that the i can cancel out, right? So the i can cancel out. So, and we require epsilon i is less than one, right? So this is less than one so that this becomes the standard metric. Is not the bounded metric anymore. It's the original absolute value thing, right? It's less than epsilon i, right? And remember, we have this. Right? So y is in the ui's. So we're done. Okay, so oof, we just show that the countable product of r is also countable. And that's a beautiful result. So I'll see you guys next time.